Uh, the government-induced cost of living crisis is impacting Londoners heavily, with many Londoners struggling to pay for the basics. I'm determined to do all I can to help, including ensuring a public transport system is as affordable as possible. Despite the pressures on public funding, it's important for everyone that we can keep public transport as affordable as we can, to help people get by during the cost of living crisis, and to help ensure London can continue to recover from the impacts of the pandemic. I'm proud that despite almost no support from the government, I've kept fares and public transport low. In my first five years as mayor, I froze all, all bus and pay-as-you-go fares and TFL services and only increased them when required to do so by central government as part of the DFL funding deals caused by the pandemic. It's important to note that our fares freeze continues to have a lasting impact. Fares would be much higher now following the recent government-led increases had my fares freeze not kept them low for so long. I also introduced the Hopper Fair, which allows passengers to make unlimited free bus and tram transfers within an hour. Nearly three quarters of a billion journeys have now benefited from the Hopper. Transport of London also provides a generous concessions uh, service to millions of eligible Londoners. I have protected the 60 plus Oyster card and the Zip cards for under 18s, despite the government's best efforts to remove these vital concessions. Discounted, discounted fares are available in London for many people, including some students, apprentices, veterans and job seekers. National rail card holders generally get a one-third discount on off-peak pay-as-you-go journeys. Although we have finally reached a funding agreement with the government, the deal still leaves TfL facing a significant funding gap and some difficult decisions remain. I'll continue to do everything I can to help Londoners, especially low-income Londoners, making ends meet and prevent further financial inequalities so we can continue to build a better, fairer and more prosperous London for all. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Mayor. I appreciate um, from all that you've said there um, that keeping fares down is a goal you've set yourself. Um, but I am particularly worried about bus fares since these are used by many people as a cheaper option. Um, now, since the last election, the bus fare has gone up by 10p despite the pledge in your manifesto where you said it's a priority to keep fares, in particular bus fares, as low as possible. And now my worry, which I've raised with you before, is if bus fares now follow inflation, they're going to get unaffordable. In fact, if you followed inflation, the bus fare would easily get above £2 by the end of your term. So my question is, what are you going to do to prevent this? And can you pledge to freeze the bus fare at least and keep it below £2? Because that is, that is a really high figure. Well, it's because it's a priority uh, to me that early went up by 10p when the government wanted a far bigger uh, uh, increase. And it's because it's a priority to me uh, that I didn't uh, accede to the government's demand. It was a demand to remove free travel for children using our uh, uh, buses. I'm afraid the deal with the government uh, is one which you know does cause big challenges uh, for us. And so Londoners know my record in relation to uh, fares, uh, and I'll do whatever I can to keep all fares low, but particularly bus fares for the reasons you've said. Okay. Not only is it poor Londoners use buses, but often there's no other form of public transport. I, exactly for that reason, yeah. So hopefully bus fares will still be a priority for you. Now, um, of course, we're all getting lots of concerned messages from over 60s in London, including uh, via Age UK, who came in with a huge petition of 10,000 names earlier this week. Um, we don't think that restoring the, um, the pre-9am benefit would be that much funding to find in this year's budget and they've already put up with this for two and a half years so my question is how high up in your priorities are Londoners over 60 going to be when you're thinking about the next budget and keeping fares low? Well it's a big priority because I, I, I've got an interest in that, I'm, I'm approaching the age and so it's, uh, <laughs> I, I, I've, got, I've got skill in the game in relation to uh, this uh, issue. Uh, again another demand uh, the government had was to get rid of to get rid of all free travel for those above the age of uh, 60. I didn't uh, accede to that demand either from the government to get rid of free travel for everyone I above the age of 60. I don't think Londoners would let you ever do that. But, uh, but can you, can you, you bring back the pre-9am as soon as you can? I don't think the actual cost of doing that would be as high as you might think. So, so firstly, the government ha is also requiring us going forward. So the government has said we must find new increased income sources of between 0 0.5 billion pounds and a billion pounds per annum from 2023. That's a condition of the pandemic deal with the uh, government. And so we are trying to uh, make sure we don't breach that deal with the uh, government. The only reason 
uh, why uh, we've had to uh, remove free travel for older people below the age of, so big pardon, below, before 9 a.m. and after 4.30 a.m. is because of a condition from government. We're freer to do that in the new uh, deal. Uh, it uh, says uh, as long as we pay uh, Barry, for it, you're out of time. You're out of time, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the Greens are out of time. Yeah, the mayor understands perfectly well the terms of the deal and that you could pay for it. So we'll, we'll see what happens.